What's up and welcome back to the kind of funny screencast. Of course, I'm Tim Geddes and I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. I've got apples stuck in my teeth, everybody. I need to cancel mm. the episode. Mm, mm, mm. Of course, we're also <laughs> joined by the big daddy himself looking beautiful in fuchsia, Greg Miller. The fucked up thing is that's an apple he ate when he visited Texas. <laughs> right, kids? That's how this fucking guy is. He's not like your average horse eating an apple a day. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so the dentist says, you know, the apple a day. What the horses eat apples, doctor. but a the horse doctor is says that. Doctors, okay. Horses eat yeah. apples all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but not just every day. Not just one a day. I don't know. We have the big dog. Awake all day. When you feed him, you gotta keep your palm flat. You don't want him to bite the knuckle. You know what I mean, Kev? <laughs> you don't bite the knuckles right off you. Have you ever fed a horse, Kev? Yeah. You ever fed a human? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fucking energy. I hate that when we record these, it's like usually before we have a full week of recording kind of podcasts and all that other stuff. So there's just like a weird energy that I'm, I'm feeling. Are you feeling it too, producer slash seducer Nick Scarpino? I am. Uh, and I've got so many questions. A, do horses, are they only allowed one apple a day, Greg? Yeah. Is that how it is? Or is there, can you pay it? Can you do it more? Secondly, the fuchsia in the background looks fantastic. Everyone's got delicate shades of, of I just, I just want to be so clear. Jealous. It's not pink, though. You know what I mean? It's, it's pink. If you, if you put it on the far side of your monitor, it becomes pink, depending on how shitty your monitor is. Uh, yeah, I think you just have a shitty Kevin, monitor. you look like you're in a North Dakota snowstorm right now. So don't <laughs> talk shit to me, all right? No color in your house, man, all right? You're, I, don't, I don't have any hues in here. You're right. You are right. Of course, if this you is did, the kind they wouldn't of work funny. just like in Andy's room. Go V or go home, I always say. <laughs> I hate you I'm so going much. Go you can go to YouTube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com for whatever reason. And for some reason, I feel like I've seen that more and more when I intro shows. Why are you even watching this? Why are you even listening? But we appreciate you for doing so because this is the kind of funny screencast. We each and every week we get together to talk about the latest in TV, movie, movie trailers. You can get it on YouTube, like I was saying, or you can get it on your favorite podcast service. Just search for kind of funny screencast on any of the podcast services out there. That's a challenge. If there's a podcast service it's not on, please tweet at me, at Tim Gettys. Let me know, and we'll change that. We'll fix that because mm-hmm. we're trying to serve you and your ears. If you want to get the show ad-free, you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers, Molecule, James Davis, and Pranksy have all done. And if you wanted to be a part of the show, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash screencast to write in your questions, theories, and thoughts about whatever we're talking about, and we'll talk about them on the show. But let's get right into it. Nick Scarpino, what did you think about Peacemaker episode five? I liked it. I continue to like this show. I think this way might have been the first one for me where, where some of the comedy wore kind of thin, uh, specifically the Ariana Grande stuff where he's like, you could have picked anyone. I think that could have been a lot stronger. And there were just some of those moments where I'm like, I feel it. It started to dip into that territory of like family guy needs to fill five minutes. So Peter just hits his knee. And goes, ah, ooh, you know, a little bit there and there, even though obviously it's not as a streaming show. It can be off by a minute or two here and there. Um, but overall, I really, really liked it. I'm, I'm intrigued. The show continues to have unbelievably ridiculous wow moments, i.e. Uh, the gorilla, um, and also end on a little bit of a cliffhanger that keeps me wanting to come back for more of it. And again, John Cena had some really nice moments in this as well where uh, he got kind of real. And, and I think like... It's interesting watching him be so unbelievably like uh, like emotionally unavailable to people, but then he has those wonderful moments. Like like the more fucked up he is, the more gratifying it is where he does have that breakthrough moment with Diebeard where he's like he's like you're a fucking stud and just and boom and like okay, they're going to be friends forever now and they all come back and even Hardcore's kind of starting to get in on it, taking the so they're kind of gelling as a team, which is great. That was enjoyable, but yeah, just a couple of pieces of the humor that kind of took me out of it for a hot second. But, you know what? That's the James Gunn way. Andy Cortez, you weren't here last week. But what do you think about this episode? This was probably my second favorite episode next to the uh, next to the debut of it, of episode one. I uh, I don't disagree with Nick. I feel like the way Nick feels now is how I've kind of felt the whole series for the last five episodes. I feel like I haven't really been as in tune with the humor as I would have hoped for, especially for something uh, from James Gunn. Uh, I don't f- I, I don't disagree in that this episode still had a lot of that humor that was just kind of like, OK, we get where you're taking this. It's it's kind of enough. But 
I do really appreciate sort of the camaraderie that we saw throughout all the team members. And I really enjoyed um, all of them just kind of, you know, gelling in this episode. It was really kind of sweet to see. I don't know why Greg is laughing. I I, am just... I guarantee he's thinking Jellin like Magellan. Is that what you're thinking right now, Greg? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it? I've been Googling for articles about you lights causing fires or something. <laughs> Great. That's a great decision to tell on this podcast. I can't find really <laughs> safe, but I was <laughs> so excited to find him. Start <laughs> sending him. This guy's fun. Just like a three-hour PS. I love you. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So this episode is definitely my favorite of the uh, since the first episode that we saw. And uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed kind of seeing the team come together and have some sweet kind of levity there um because as y'all know i haven't really loved the whole squad this whole time uh but this one i i kind of enjoyed seeing them kind of you know uh come together and become friends in a really cool neat way greg miller uh sorry again i didn't mean to derail us there i know it's a serious show um <laughs> you know I obviously love James Gunn. I think we all do coming off of Guardians of the Galaxy. If you want to go further back, something like Slither or whatever. But I would have never, when they announced Peacemaker, I was like, really? Like, and as cool as James or whatever, I'm sure I'll like it or whatever. I never in a million years would have thought that I would be sitting here during episode five with the realization of like, fuck, this is my favorite DCEU thing so far. Like, and I, you know, they could easily screw it up or whatever and knock it off course, or whatever. I guess not easily because James is so talented and the cast is so good. Great, uh, not like, to not to really too much, but like what up to this point, what would you have said was? It's that funny thing of like I, I when I had that realization last night and stepped back, and I'm like, what is it? I was like, oh uh, yeah, right. It's the DCEU. Whereas like I'm the DC Guardians? fanboy of the group, right? And there hasn't been oh, something God. I think that's a runaway success that I look at and go, oh yeah, that nailed it. Even Birds of Prey, which I really liked, I was still like, these aren't characters I care about. You know what I mean? And I and I mean that both as a DC fan. Who likes Superman and who likes Batman and likes likes the core stuff and the heroes, right? But also in terms of the movie, they made them entertaining. Harley with the sandwich is funny. Like I like Huntress, whatever. She was com or comical, but I didn't care about them. And that's the difference here yeah. with Peacemaker. Not Suicide like, Squad. Uh, no, I mean, like I again, I liked Suicide Squad again, I, but it's just, it's a very similar thing of like, okay, Bloodsport's cool, but it doesn't give a fuck. But he kind of gives a fuck, and Peacemaker's cool, and Ratcatcher's cool, like it's always when you get into a series that's good i feel and when we talk about this or uh you know the mcu shows you start you know not grading on a curve but obviously these get extra credit because i just get to exist with these characters in such a way right mm -hmm. and to get to this through this episode and have it be you know uh tasty and peacemaker sitting on the couch you know sharing a beer and that horrible drink and just fucking around i was like fuck i love these characters and like i care about these characters mm -hmm. and again like you know when i got when i hit play on this episode it was that thing of like, what happened again? And oh, fuck, right. Episode four ends in that great musical moment. And he's on the ground, you know, clearly having a breakdown. And, you know, the bug rolls in and the eagle to pick right back up for it. It's like, I care. I have never. Peacemaker is a character I knew nothing about, well, very little about, obviously, from DC history. Uh, knew very little about before Suicide Squad. Left Suicide Squad being like, well, he sucks, whatever. And now I'm in this show and like I care so much about him and his journey and what's going on with him. And this is the stuff we still don't know about his brother and him finding this and like how heartbreaking it was to see Tasty plant the diary. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, they're that, was, he that was the point that I was going to bring up, Greg. I was like, that scene was so good. And it was so, and it was, it was really capped off by her. She hides it the first time and goes, oh, what am I doing? And you're like, oh, good. She's not going to do it. And then, of course, she hides it in a better spot. And it's heartbreaking because you're like, you, this is the, and he just admitted to her. He's like, I never thought I'd have this, which is a friend. Like I have a friend, a, con a Conrad, someone who got a, like a drinking buddy that I can hang out with. And then she, of course, he has to go and, you know, abide by her mother's sort of uh, uh, wishes or not wishes, I guess, orders. And it's really conflicting and it's sad, but that is, that's good. That's like a good emotional reaction we're having to this show. It's something that we actually 100%. care about, which is great. And it's that thing where it's like, you know, there's that, there's the stuff you already kind of mentioned, right, Nick, of like seeing him in Economos or whatever it is, uh, become friends, like have finally ha have that moment. First off, be called out about the die beard thing, then get into, uh, again, it's all delivered with funny stuff as Vigilante explains all the penis nicknames and how that happened and how they, you know, and then to get to them being at the end and celebrating together. Yeah. And, you know, shaking hands. It's like, it's People like, picked ah. on me. Why? 
Well, I was such a bully, you know. They you call, call me, me a bully. bully? <laughs> <laughs> that, was such a, that was such a great. I mean, all all of the comments around bullying in general is so great in this show, and it's so like you see him come around and be like, "Oh shit!" Like I am kind of doing that, but then also he just kind of goes double down into it as well. And it's then, kind of, it's, and it's then silly. again, for, I mean, Ty Nolan is. I'm sorry, I'm dominating a bit here, but like then again, like this movie is delivering something I've wanted out of all the other DCEU movies, whether it be Batman v Superman or whether it be Justice League or whatever, and that's building a universe and making it normal, right? Like it's when any, every MCU thing we watch, like you, there'll be a mention of the blip or this or Captain Rogers or whatever, and like the fight, the fact that again. I, you know, I don't know what's going on in James Gunn's head or whatever he negotiated with HBO, but like for them to be able to sit here and after every episode, James Gunn usually tweets uh, the character he's introduced to the world and made canon. And the fact that he fucking made Kite Man, hell yeah, canon. It's like, fuck yes. You know what I mean? Like there's such a world. They've, the, you know, just the casual conversation of Superman also likes to go like, what, X-Men Shizen or whatever when he does the thing. Of making, Where do you get this? Google. Like cool. it, was, it was so fucking good to see them all have these conversations. I love this show. I love this episode. I love this world. Kevin Koala. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat as uh, Greg where it's like I'm it's. I'm blown away by this. Uh, same thing when it was announced. I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. Like he was, he was a fine character in the thing, but like I don't know if they can do a whole movie. And it's like, man, I can't believe how hard I've laughed and how much they like really, really had my attention with stuff. Like one of the funniest jokes in the the season for me was the vigilante being like, I wanted to use the chainsaw. And the other dude coming in with it, and he'd be like, "Yeah, it's kind of funny that you came in with a chainsaw." And I just talked about that, yeah. And That's it's just funny. like that, but like that sense of humor is such a very specific thing of like setup, time, then like cool moment, then punchline to it. That it's just right. like it's so good. Uh, I mean, I loved it. I love this episode. The action I thought was really fun. Again, the, I'm fully invested on the story the uh the the way this one ends with the uh the the journal i can't wait to find out what's going on with that but then also we get the what's the name of the character she finds out that the director is bad yeah I, right with the x-ray yeah um she finds out the director is bad so i'm so excited to see where next week's episode right. like i think this sure. week more than than most weeks i ended and i was just like I can't believe how on the edge I am for this next episode. <clears throat> yeah, I want to throw yeah. that out there. Just and Tim, will, I, I want to ask you your opinions on this as well. But the action on, in this one, I thought was especially good. To Kevin's point, like I was scared for them when they were trapped in that room. The way they mm -hmm. choreographed the butterflies that they're ripping through the fences and stuff like that, and that scream they do, I was like, this is this is very entertaining and kind of tense. It's 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 it's. But really it was good. such a great follow up, right? Because you have the two different tracks of what's happening. <laughs> Did he make a walk? Like, can I help? As soon as they went to, to the wide, I'm like. Can I help you? Like, oh, she's about to get shot. Yeah. <laughs> boom, cho cho, boom. Just <laughs> and that bio is like, I thought you were gonna be cool. He's like, do I look cool? Like, do I look cool? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Um, Tim, what did you think of this episode? I I absolutely love this show, and I I feel like it is really kind of James Gunn like at his best because it's kind of mixing the kind of like fun action comedy character storylines and like horror elements in a way that this episode in particular i think really kind of showcased his skill set like that whole gorilla fight the action was awesome and the way the camera shot the entire thing felt like a video game and it almost felt resident evil-esque and like, mm -hmm. it reminded me a lot of even like metal gear solid like their older ones and um i think that's even accentuated by his use of the music and score not just the licensed tracks that are awesome and always fucking great uh but there's like a chip toony vibe to a lot of the stuff that we saw introduced in the um judo master fight a couple mm -hmm. episodes ago uh but even in the gorilla fight there there was like hints of that happening and i just like it that it's kind of like this fantastic world that is almost scott pilgrim-esque but it's more grounded it's more like everything's actually going on mm -hmm. in this world because we're dealing with superheroes here and uh the the cast and, and crew that we have of these characters just continues to mesh in a way that i'm so invested in all of them that i can't believe that like we keep saying oh, i can't believe i care about peacemaker like i can't believe i care about the team i can't believe mm -hmm. that seeing that seeing hardcore take the picture and text it to the team like <clears throat> made me feel something i wanted and to they see each of their reactions be happy about it and like it it felt earned which is like such a hard thing for this tier of character we're talking about and then for the it to end on the uh the diary thing is heartbreaking that's the word greg said and it's the, the note i wrote down and like 
I could have never thought that a D character on Peacemaker would break my heart uh, with a, a plot point. Like it's very, very well done. And like, I can't wait to see where the, the show goes. Greg, you had your hand raised. No, I was I was chiming in on it with like yeah, exactly like you know when they when they had the text thread and they named it the Eleventh Street Gang or that Boys ass. or whatever it was right I was like oh man like that's so that's such a great attention to detail and you can see how happy they all are to be in that group chain and fuck around with each other it's great yeah it was like it's just like the time like we weren't actually a company Greg until yep. that one time where you texted me a photo of yourself in a hotel room shirtless and you just had the body hair perfectly glistening oh, in like the mid afternoon oh. light and I was like now we're a fucking team. Now we're our team, and now I'm gonna send this to Kevin every every year on the anniversary of that photo. <laughs> of the anniversary. <laughs> I, I, uh, I before, will say, before we get to you, Andy, oh. let me tell you about our sponsors. There are a ton of worthwhile goals to set for yourself this year, and personally, learning a new language with Babbel is at the top of my list. Babbel is the addictively fun, fast, and easy language learning app that has sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Greg, and as you know, I'm in love with a French Canadian named Jean Vieux Saint Ange. And uh, Jen, of course, uh, first language is French. She learned English later on, and I've been trying to learn French, but I keep falling off. I've got Babbel on my phone. I'm ready to do it in 2022. Other language learning apps use AI for their lessons plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. You can choose from 14 different languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. I could probably use that for English. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code KINDAFUNNY, all one word. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code KINDAFUNNY, Babbel, language for life. When it comes to getting a good night's sleep, there's only one thing you need. A good mattress. Forget all those gimmicks like mattress toppers and weighted blankets. If your mattress is terrible, your sleep is going to be terrible. So get the only thing you truly need, a purple mattress. Only purple mattresses have the gel flex grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. How do I know? Well, I talked to a young man named Timothy Geddes and Timothy swears by the purple pillow. Then on top of that, he used to have a roommate named Joey Noel who swore by her purple mattress. That's right. Kind of funny sleeping all over this purple stuff and loving every minute of it. Uh, getting a great night's sleep starts with having a great mattress. Get a purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash kind of funny and use the code kind of funny. For a limited time, you can get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash kind of funny. Code kind of funny for 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash kind of funny. Promo code kind of funny. Terms apply. Sorry about that. Go for it. I did not. Uh, I didn't love the way um, the director or whatever kind of caught out of bio f looking at him through the x-ray thing. Mm. I was I was kind of hoping for a different sort of ending. It felt kind of like unjustified well, that he just like, yeah, like monster. Well, mode. that's my like, question, I mean, though. Right. <laughs> do we think he's a bad guy? Because we've already had it. We have already had that 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 sort of dispelled a little bit by Judah Masters. Like they're not what you think. I have a, I have this weird feeling that he actually is a good guy, and maybe Waller knows he's a has known he's a butterfly the whole I mean, time. And, and like I, she's I think for her. the biggest thing against everything is that like we're introduced to that other mercenary guy, and then suddenly he's the sheriff, right, or something, right? He takes over the yeah. the prison or the the jail. Yeah, yeah, but like, it. Do you guys think that's the same guy, or do you think that's him with a butterfly in him? Well, oh, I you mean I, because <clears throat> Merce put him onto it? Merns. Mm -hmm. I keep calling him Mers. It's Mern, right? Mern. Mern. I think that I think that guy does. So okay. I think the new sheriff in town <laughs> doesn't know that Mern is a butterfly. So you thought that was for, that was I the think, same. Sorry. Go ahead. I think he's working with Amanda Waller and all of them, and so he's in there just to get the heat off of them, so they can move without this the police fucking it up. And that's evident. I thought by when they, they sit down in, their, in his uh, hotel room, right? They talk about a mission they already ran or whatever, and he's like, "I've changed a lot since then." Yeah, they, like they talk not in, "Hey, we're two aliens hanging out in these people." They talk but, as if one of them doesn't know the other is evil. Or well, yeah, that, evil, that's what I'm alien. saying. I I thought at that point he ha didn't have the butterfly in him yet. Burn got him, and then later got the butterfly in him. I, so you I, think that's I, a flashback because we already saw him an episode before eat oh, the did we? stuff as a butterfly. Yeah. No, 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 the I'm sorry. I was talking about the Kevin, yeah, the Kevin sheriff, thinks right? I do not think the chef has it. I do not think the sheriff has a butterfly in him. I don't think Great so job. Either. Great job, Tim. 
Um, That's not me. I hate this. Uh, <laughs> Why would Kevin have this power? <laughs> I, <laughs> is that Rocket Raccoon? <laughs> oh, man. Greg, I, I think that um, I, I see where Kevin's going, that maybe the audience is meant to yeah, think so that good. maybe the deputy has some sort of uh, that he has the butterfly in him now, just because he seemed to be acting in a very odd way. But I don't think I think it was maybe a red herring, Kevin. I don't think he has any sort of butterfly in him. That being said, I still don't love that sort of like reaction to the x-ray vision. It seemed like it just didn't make yeah. a whole lot of sense that yeah. he would have known what she was doing at that moment. Um, I would have preferred more of a of a twist where out of bio was like, shit, I have this info now. What do I do with it? Um, yeah. How do I but disseminate I that up, to this crew? I think we're going to pick up with him not hurting her but doing like the hold on hold on let me explain let me explain and i think he's gonna you think so i think he's gonna reveal his part of the plot his device of what he's doing and what they're up to because she's too major of a character to die right now i mean it would be amazing if they were like we're gonna game of thrones this motherfucker and kill whoever we want but i I have a feeling he's a good guy or at least it's a it's a it's a maybe like us he's just trying to be a good guy you know exactly and just surrounded by a bunch of punks um the, you know what i was confused about though was like the sheriff was like stand down detective and i was like i don't think you guys work for the same branch of the law enforcement <laughs> like she is a detective with a police department you're a sheriff's officer running a prison i don't think you have authority over her but i could be wrong it's all right really kevin complicated. that's all really complicated because he's technically like, higher he outranks her but they're not she's not i'd be like no motherfucker like you're not my boss i mean it's Tim. whose jurisdiction are there are they in is, is the what question what about jurisprudence right? Is that a thing? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been driving me crazy every episode. So there's the the two cops, right? Yeah, detectives. Who is the actor of the dude cop? Lachlan Monroe. He's, He's the guy from, from A Night at the Roxbury. Scary movie. He's. I think he was the scary movie guy. Yeah, I think that's what I know him from. He's. I remember him being silly in movies. Yes. 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 Okay. And okay. then the other actress is, or the actress is named Annie Chang. Uh, she plays Sophia Song. She's phenomenal in this. All she the really is. She has with Robert Patrick. She's like, I'm not a white guy. So I can't. I, can't really, yeah. I love it. And <laughs> earlier you were talking about the the humor kind of not working for you with the the. It could have been anyone. It could have been Ariana. It could have been this. Could have been that. That type of humor for me, I think, with this show, really works because it. John Cena is so good at delivering it. Where I, whether it's improv or scripted, it feels so funny. Where they always choose the funniest names for me. So yeah. it gets through the Family Guy kind of uh you know him hitting his knee like you were talking about earlier type of joke even though it feels that way because james gunn is so good at writing the perfect paced narrative of names that like get increasingly funnier and different and varied where it's not just like oh a bunch of actresses or whatever he's like there's cartoon characters there's like commercial characters like that Mm -hmm. stuff like really works for me because like that's it's like the fun type of reference humor that doesn't just come off as like remember this remember this it's like it feels like it's building a character more and so i really like that yeah. and then then it being backed up later in a different way with the the lucy Lou, oh i'm running out of white guy stuff like i right. i thought that that was like really clever and, and funny yeah again i don't want to paint this as like this is like an overarching problem i think i think this is just kind of james gunn in a nutshell for me and i've talked about this with every james gunn movie we saw including guardians of the galaxy he just loves to throw so much stuff into his movies joke wise that sometimes they don't hit for me and sometimes they do like in this same episode got this got the biggest laugh or maybe one of the biggest laughs out of any of the, the episodes so far, which is when he kills him with the chain. He kills the gorilla with the chainsaw, uh, which, by the way, the CG on that looked great. The CG in the show with the animals is yeah. fantastic. And that's really, really, really a good thing because it doesn't take you out of it immediately. But when he kills him, and, and John Cena just looks at him. You're like, oh, this is it. They're going to become friends right now. He goes, you are a fucking stud. I was like, yeah, <laughs> dude. That killed me. I, so, you know, it's not detrimental, I don't think, to the series. I think I'd rather have them shoot their shots more often than not and, and miss a little bit for me than have them be too subdued dude it also has the uh, a line that i love so much of like yeah a grenade kills like two people yeah he's like, <laughs> yeah. You're like what's a good she's like how big is an explosion we got? i don't know i just invented it this morning this morning <laughs> Dude, my, my favorite joke of this episode has been kind of set up and like there's been little tiny payoffs throughout the series but i love that all the helmets look exactly the same and i love that she looks at like what's the new helmet do <laughs> it's like why would you know it's a new helmet they all look fucking are identical they? Like, looks they different. Different. no they look like different. different the fins yeah the fins are yeah different. the fins are different and this one had, this one had like a black stripe on it like a matte black stripe on it if you go back and look, well, I need to go back and look. I go thought, back and I look thought at the it. Jo- 
that they all look identical, oh, but they all no, do no, slightly no. different things. This one has like a different. I think it had like a different form factor to it. They all kind of look like Jesus Christ, like a like a halo. Yeah, they them. they have different like silhouettes, yeah. kind of like That's different. Really funny things hanging off of them. But I do whatever. love that. Like I love the even the meta joke of he has to switch helmets in a universe where this guy has the technology yeah. to make a multi-dimensional like a, 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 a storage Room. compartment that exists outside of our dimension. A white supremacist. <laughs> yeah, a white supremacist. He still can't dial in two pieces of technology into each helmet. It's got to be one, like one helmet does x-ray. The other one has a sonic blast. The other one has this, that. It's like maybe, he, I don't know, maybe on a low-key weird note, he's just doing that so that his son comes back to visit every once in a while. But at the same time, we're like, why don't you just make one helmet to rule them all so I can have all this technology in it? It's funny. I, I did love that moment of conflict between the two cops being like, damn, we got to let free the white supremacist like the kkk <laughs> guy we gotta let that guy out of jail and there is that moment where you know the two uh the two the couple that you know mm -hmm. end up kind of admitting to it being like you're really gonna do that like come on what <laughs> it's it's obvious that you should do the right thing here so i thought that was a really kind of cool moment to see like damn maybe we should just keep him in there and not look at the evidence or whatever but we'll see what happens now with uh with oh, oh what's his face um i keep forgetting the actor's robert. name robert patrick yeah. augie call him terminator call him t100 uh, t1000 t1000 even, by the way even that scene with the when we return to the couple's place again those those two are hilarious yeah she's yeah, like yeah. i don't know he goes babe now's not the time to lie and they start yelling at each other but they're like and the guy was like he had to give it up he's like okay it was this guy but he was actually a really nice guy kind of yeah. like he treated <laughs> us really well <laughs> <laughs> he's a pretty good guy <laughs> I love the the intro to the episode with Eagly. I mean, first off, I just love Eagly, but I love that Eagly is now just just a just a known quantity. Well, we're all just like, oh yeah, Eagly's there. They're hanging out. Just John Cena and his bird, and John James Gunn's so good at the the writing characters that we just believe in it and we just want to see them together. And like, that's fun as hell because it's so stupid and it shouldn't work. Eagly, like, and this is how dumb I am. For the first couple episodes, I was like, man, they fucking trained that eagle real well. Oh, and I'm Nick. like, oh no, this is probably CG. Oh, I was Nick. like, why would it, where, but right when it hugged him, I was like, that's theoretically possible, right? I, mean, you can <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. To be able to hug someone, but then he put his arm around him. I was like, oh no, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe though, because eagles are smart. They're smart birds. Where do we think the Robert Patrick storyline is going? It's a good question. I think they're. Pro if I had to guess, they're either setting him up for a season two, being the big baddie in that, or. Because, I mean, they're really burying this deep. They're going to have some sort of resolution and or it's going to come to a head in this episode or in, in this season. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's around for the next one. He's kind of like the big bad guy. And it's like all about white supremacists. Or we need to get that moment where Robert Patrick's like, son, come with me. And he's like, no, dad, not anymore. I'm not yeah. going with like, are we going to get that sort of thing happening? Well, we yeah. still we need still to get a resolution with him and his brother. Yeah. yeah. So oh, shit, that's right. going to come to that's going to be a thing. And I think that emotionally like he has to basically like tell his dad off he has to stand up to his dad and be like i'm no longer on this track i'm with these other people but it's going to be of course spoilers he's going to find the diary or someone's going to find the diary and frame him and he's going to realize that he's been double crossed by his own team so that's going to be more conflict that's for him he's going to get over it. It. cry again john cena's had to cry like every single episode he's great. i love him so he's much so he's so yeah. good just when he found his family he's going to get screwed over again this is going to suck i don't want to see that stick. Go ahead. Big question for me, though. I mean, the only problem I really have with this episode is who's watching Judo Master? Where did he go? The whole team's question. gone. Where's Judo Master? He's probably right? dead, right? No, he no. had him on life support last time. Remember, they made that joke about moving his liver up to be his heart. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, like, they brought him back, and he's. I like, thought oh, he he's hung there. on just for a little longer. Did he? I don't know. I, I have a I feeling know. he's coming back, and I think he's going to be part of the team going forward because that would be unbelievable. <laughs> I'm yeah, I mean, it's so interesting. Bad. I I mean, we don't know if there's going to be a season two, and I, I kind of get the vibe that there won't be They're a direct follow-up to this. Better, better but better be yeah, I, I hope we get something. But I, I think that we're going to see, I mean, we have three episodes left, right? Was it, there's five, so we have six, seven, eight left. Sounds like, right. I have imagined we're going to get the answers, like of what Robert Patrick's doing and all that stuff. Like, I, I think it'll come to a head this season because like, we're running out of things to deal with. Because it's like seen, there's. But, but the problem is we haven't really seen him do anything nefarious. He's not setting up a storyline where he's like trying to break yeah. all these people out and becoming it. He's just trying to prove 
kind of rightfully, unfortunately, that he's been framed for murder. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, every at every turn, people somewhere in the higher ups, and I love that conversation about the deep state, which is like, it's not a deep state thing. He's like, are there or are there not operatives <laughs> of the government <laughs> that nobody knows about that are operating in secret? He goes, okay, that is deep state, yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like, I think it's all going to be just B story plot. Like, I don't think it's going to be a big. I don't know. Maybe maybe he breaks out and and he puts yeah. his suit back on and he's ready to rock and roll again. But yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like they're building to anything. It just seems like. He's in prison and, like, there's more history there with the character, especially with him going to prison and, like, there being, you know, uh, a white supremacist, supremacist like, faction in, yeah. in, in prison. So I... I don't. I don't know that's going. We don't think, I'm I mean, more curious have, to see. Greg, we're going to see him put on the white dragon suit. We're going to see him put on. You think so? Raise the question. <laughs> can you call James? Going to say what's going on with? Can you tell us what happens with Robert Patrick's character at the end of this? Is he going to be? No, he might tell you. Don't. Don't yeah, spoil for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, oh, that's no. interesting, Andy. I, I'm not like sure that, we yeah. see him in the suit. I actually, now that you're bringing that up, Andy, that it makes sense to me for him to go after Vigilante. And be like, hey, what the fuck's going on? So I wonder mm. if that we're gonna see that crisis hit mm. at the same time that the journal, like whatever they're doing with the journal, because that's what I'm most interested in. Like, what is this a, an actual journal that he has? Because <laughs> I could totally see Peacemaker having a journal that he writes in. Incredible. You know, oh, a thousand. It's like yeah. and it was like bejeweled. Yeah, and I was gonna like say sparkles. it definitely made it look like the kind of thing he would make. It was yeah. incredible. So I mean, I, I I could see that all crescendoing at the same time. You know, what was the joke with the drink? I missed it. Why did it taste bad? Because that's it was a terrible just, combination. Yeah, oh, okay. So Eagly didn't piss in it or something like that. No, 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 no. God, okay. that was hilarious too. When she tries to go to the bathroom and <laughs> Eagly. <said, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eagly. Uh, any closing thoughts on the episode? Like, I can't wait again, for more. I'm right there with Kevin. Yeah, I'm right there. I, I'm with everyone else. I, this is another one where I was like, close it down. I'm like, ah, if this show was all out right now, if we were doing it all at once, I would have binged it. Binge yeah, this because it's just so binge worthy. But. Tim, I know you don't like binge. I, I know you like watching week to week, and you're getting your damn wish, of course, again. I love week to week, everybody. Let us know in the comments below what you think about week to week, what you think about Peacemaker, and what you think about Greg Miller's fuchsia. Until next time, I love you all. Goodbye. Go be or go pink. home.